What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Sorry if there's a bit of wind noise, it is a bloody windy day, it's cold, it's winter and it's windy. Today we are going to review the V200 Mercedes and this is the sport line. So it's got the bigger mags, the harder suspension, it's got slotted and ventilated discs at, fr at the front, which looks number one really cool and it actually stops really well for like a family, family car. Um, now, like I said, this is the V200 and we are going to do a full review on this car in depth so practicality, speed, comfortability, freaking everything this is going to be a good one so like with all of my reviews, let's start with practicality and the first thing we do when we look at practicality is boot space because I mean, if you can't fit anything in the car, it's not very practical is it? in the boot, you'll find this latchy thingy which does work really well to put away your stuff and it slides by itself and everything this isn't stock and this isn't stock either this is just my jacket so that won't be in yours, okay? So let's just move this rubber quickly. I'm just going to chuck that in the back as well. Okay, so in the back you'll find a boot, 455 liters. So this ain't a bad size. It's not huge, but it's more than good enough for your average person and your average needs. Underneath you'll find an extra bit of storage with a nice Mercedes tray thingy. So I don't think you can really fit much under there, but it's a nice to have. At least you've got a bit of extra storage to just chuck some stuff. Then you can also flatten down these seats then your boots will go from a, a small is 455 liters to a really large 1470 liter boot and now, like I said when you drop down the seats you've got a 1500 liter boot so pretty large it does have a bit of a ledge but at least you've got this piece of plastic to protect the seats when you slide stuff over so that is nice now we're gonna move to rear passenger comfortability and like features let's see if there's anything nice when you're sitting in the back, for me personally, again, I'm not the tallest person, but for me, there's a hell of a lot of leg room. Like, I've got space and headroom is a stupid amount. Like, I don't know if you can see that, but that's a lot. So that's great. Then you've got like your own little tray here with a cup holder and you can set it down too if you don't like it. But I mean, let's say you're going on a long journey, you can put like some food here and then your mom can scream at you because you're messing in the car. So it's a win-win, very good. Then when there's only two passengers at the back, you've got nice cup holders and an uh, armrest, which is really cool. This is nice. I like this a lot. Now sitting in the middle, very crap. I'm not going to lie, uncomfortable as hell. There's this thing in the middle where you're... Oh, shit. Sitting in the middle is very uncomfortable. Um, you sit super upright. The seat is very narrow, so you are most definitely going to be touching thighs with your fellow passengers at the back. And then at your legs, there's this thing in the middle. So you're going to have to sit with your feet next to the pe people. In the it's just going to be a horrible situation. Nobody's going to like it. So if you actually want to be five people in the car, just know that the rear passengers are going to be very uncomfortable. The car does have aircon at the back, but the vents sit underneath the seats. So it's only at the bottom. The, the top part of the air that comes to the back is going to be the front one. So if you've got a lot of people in the car on a really hot day, the climate control is going to be, have to be on a very high level. So the two people in the front are going to freeze, while the people in the rear are going to be like either warm or just right while you freeze in the front. So that's not ideal. Would have been nice if there were vents in the middle. The rear passengers, there is a 12 volt charger. So one of them can at least charge the phone and isofix ports at the back. So it is practical. My only critique for the rear would be it should have um, vents for the aircon at the top as well. And I don't, this is not really a critique, but I wouldn't recommend somebody sitting in the middle. Moving to the front. So in the front, I've got a GoPro, but that's not normally there, okay? Unfortunately, that's not an optional extra on this car. So in the front, you are greeted with a really nice looking steering wheel. The whole layout of the car to me looks nice. The screen is a bit small and the borders are a bit large. But this is a 2014 model, it's not a brand new car, so you can't really expect it to have a big 9 inch screen or whatever. So it does have a tiny screen, but hey, at least it does have a screen. Now the vents in the front really looks cool. I like this round design that Mercedes uses. I think this is really cool. And it's like fully directional. It's it's. I think this is better than those other vents. I, I like that. Then you've got a lot of storage. So you've got a holder here. A small holder in the front with a, a charger slash smoking thing. I don't really smoke, so I've never used that. You've got two cup holders that are changeable in size. So you can put big stuff and small stuff in and it will like adjust itself to the thing so your cup won't really spill okay so now to see if what i said about the cup holders is true what we are going to do is we're going to do a launch so like standing at a still 
So standing still, building boost, and then launching the car as hard as we can. And then we're gonna see if this thing falls over or anything. So let's see how good this cup holder is. Is it as good as I just said it is? Or was I just talking poo poo? So we're gonna put it into sport mode. Boom. And then we're gonna stop, build power, and go. It's holding nicely. It didn't fall over or anything. So, you see, very good. I'm gonna do a little bit of an emergency brake and let's see if it still holds. Yeah, good. Then here you've got another storage space and you've got a holder specifically for your glasses at the top, which is nice. Now onto the infotainment system. It is Bluetooth, which is nice. So you can connect your phone up and I really like this rotary knob. The, the controls of the radio just work so much better than having a touchscreen. It's not for me. I don't like the touchscreen. So you can just select your media there. Everything is through this knob and it just works well. I like this system. It's a good system. The only thing I don't like about how this system works is the fact that these buttons don't work there. So if let's say you're driving and this is something that happened to me and you want to skip a song my first instinct is to press this button but what happens then is you are going through menus here now you can select your bluetooth device here and then the buttons will work but most of the time you've got your your computer on your trip count and you're just driving along and then boom 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 i want to skip my song and then you just move between menus that's that's a bit stupid i think there should have been an extra button or something to skip i think what they should have done is the same that Citroen did in the DS3 where you've got like a little media knobby here at the side that does your skipping and everything that just sits here at the bottom so it's not in the way at all you can barely see it but it's got buttons where you can skip and put the volume up just here at the back of the steering wheel it doesn't get in the way it's not like extra and confusing it's easy and then the bonus of that is you don't have to skip on the buttons here or with the knob because you can skip with the knob but like I said it's just easier on the steering wheel now the latch to open your bonnet is all the way at the bottom here and it, it's really difficult to find and it doesn't have like a picture or something telling you what it is. So if you just got the car and you want to check something underneath the hood, that can be a bit stupid if I'm honest. Underneath the hood you'll find a 1.6 litre 4 cylinder turbocharged motor. Now this engine is actually really quite good because it finds a nice balance of having enough power yet achieving a really good fuel efficiency. So this thing has got about 150 horsepower and and 250 newton meters of torque. Now whilst having a decent amount of performance it doesn't have the worst fuel efficiency. Now Mercedes claims 6 liters per 100 kilometers. In reality you'll probably get closer to 7 or 8 but even that's not bad for most cars these days. Okay so onto the right portion of this video. This is your key. It's actually quite nice. I like it. It's stylish <clears throat> but it doesn't have a push button start like most cars with a fob. You still put it in the ignition like with a normal car and you twist the key. <coughs> now to put it in gear, you've got this weird gear selected thing at the steering wheel instead of having it at the bottom like most automatics. So you have to just move the knobby and then it will go into reverse. At the back you've got a reverse camera to assist you while reversing, although me personally I don't use the reverse camera at all, I use the mirrors to reverse, I'm really bad at using this camera thing. So now we are officially on the road, yeah? now this car is a 7 speed automatic and the gearbox is really smooth, like properly smooth, you can't even feel this thing shifting gears, um, it honestly just glides through the gears and when you put your foot down and it actually reacts, it does shift properly quick but it is a DCT system so it should be fast in the shifting. Okay, so when driving, the first thing you'll notice is the throttle is a bit sluggish. It feels like spongy. Um, it's almost like the first 50% of throttle movement does absolutely nothing. Like, you'll put it up to 50% throttle and the car would barely move. And then you just put it down a little bit more and then the car like jumps into action. It's very weird. I don't know if that's like a fuel efficiency thing. Um, and even if you take it out of eco, it's still like that. So the throttle, I'm not a big fan of. I'm not gonna lie, the throttle's pretty crap. That's that's a big no-no for me. I'm not a fan of that. Like, I want my throttle to do what I tell it to do. If I give it a little bit of throttle, the car should not go fast. If I give 50%, it should have a decent amount of power. And if I put my foot flat, the car should go. If that makes sense, what I'm saying. So it's a strong motor. Like the motor doesn't feel weak. It's the throttle response that is the problem. Then on the steering wheel feel, um, it is electric, so it's very light. But the point of this car is not going racing. The point of this car is being comfortable and like a family car. So 
a really light steering wheel scoop. It's not a bad thing in this car, since you're not gonna go take it around the corners most of the time. But we are quickly gonna take it through some twisties and see how grippy it is. Now, it's not the, like the craziest twisties on it, but it's enough to just like feel it out. So I'm gonna put my foot down. Performance, not bad. Um, it does shift a bit early at 5,500 RPM. Um, but the brakes and suspension for what it is, which is a sports tourer, is not bad. I mean this is technically like a family car and it really doesn't handle badly. Like genuinely quite happy with the handling of this car. Now like I just said previously, um, it does shift a bit early, like 5000 RPM with my foot flat. Shift points on this car when your foot is flat in full auto mode is 5000 RPM. Now it does rev to six, just over 6,000, but for some reason the car will shift by itself before then. Don't understand why, but it does. Now, I am gonna put it in sport mode and see if the shift points change. It does, okay, so now it shifts just before 6,000 RPM. Now, I do know that even if you put it in manual and you've got the car in sport mode, um, it will shift automatically at that same point. So even if you want to change it, the car will just decide, no, you're dumber than me, and it's gonna shift by itself, which I am not a fan of. I wanna be, if I put the car in manual, whether it's an automatic or not, it means I want to be driving the car manual. I wanna change the gears. Now, I don't know if the same is true when the car is in manual, so let's test it out. We are in manual now. Is it gonna protect, yeah, it still protects itself. So I don't know what the point of the manual mode is, when it's just gonna automatically change the gear in any way. So no matter what, the car will never rev out past 6,000 RPM because it's gonna shift at 5,900 RPM in sport mode, manual mode, and in eco mode it shifts at five. So yeah, the the manual is just a gimmick because it's not gonna, you can't like properly choose what you want to do. The car's still gonna do it itself. Now unlike an open road, the, the ride's not bad. It does ride a little hard, for like a family car, I mean it's a sports tourer and the suspension is not the softest. It's not like hard, it's not uncomfortable at all. It's just a bit harder than you would expect. I've driven sportier cars that had a softer ride than this and it does have a decent amount of road noise. Like I'm gonna go over a bit of a bumpy part and you are probably gonna hear the road as I do it. Like that's loud, like properly loud. But on the open road, it is really easy to drive. I mean, it's got enough power to just like chill at 1,800 RPM and just like go. And then you can comfortably overtake when the throttle decides it actually wants to overtake. So you'll put your foot down and then wait a good 25 seconds and then the car will be like, okay, this, this person actually wants to accelerate. It's not just a suggestion, they really want to do it. And then the car will shift down and you'll be able to pass whoever's in front of you. And, and to prove my point that I'm not just over exaggerating, I'm in fifth gear now at 2000 RPM. I'm gonna put my foot down and we're gonna count how many seconds it takes for it to shift down. So, three, two, one. Okay, there we went. So, I'm gonna put a timer up on the screen and then we can see how long it took. And that's better than most of the time, if I'm honest. And my foot was all the way flat. Okay, so let's move on to five things that I dislike about this car. This is the first thing that sometimes happen, and this might just be me, so take this with like a grain of salt. But this rotary knob, I do like, I like it a lot, that's cool. But let's say you want to get something in this compartment here while you're driving. Bam, driving, and you move to get something. Sometimes you skip a song because your arm is spinning this wheel or touching this wheel or whatever. And then it will bug it around with your infotainment system while you're driving. And you don't want to, you just want to quickly get something in there. And maybe that's just me, but that has, that has happened quite a few times to me where I want to just reach for something and then it skips a song or you'll jump to another screen or whatever. And that, that's stupid. Okay, but like I said, that might just be me. Um, maybe some people like work like that. I don't know, but for me personally, that, that was a problem. The second thing that annoys me, and that's something I did address just now, was the fact that it doesn't have a true manual mode. If I want to put the car in manual, especially this one that's like the sporty version, I want to be able to tell the car when to shift gears. If I want to go to redline and I want to valve bounce the thing like a crazy person, that's something I want to do then. I, I feel like I, I have the full right when I pay for the car to choose when I want to shift the gears. 
Now the next thing isn't really something I hate about the car, whatever. It's just something to keep in mind. So with the sport trim, you get this really nice. It looks nice. I mean, this gloss black trim everywhere. There's gloss black. There's gloss black. But when you go closer, you'll see there's like yucky yucky fingerprints everywhere on all of the gloss black on all four corners and that's not because of the people that drive the car stupid it's because it's something that happens with any gloss black i mean piano black picks up fingerprints like nothing else and then on the inside it continues there's gloss black so luckily it's not a touchscreen system but i mean all of these gloss black things that look really nice when it's clean get really yucky when anybody just touches you just have to touch it once look and clean okay one finger and there's a finger mark that's not ideal now like i said that's not something i hate about the car it's just something to keep like in mind you have to know the car is gonna have some finger marks it's not a bad thing necessarily because i do like the way it looks it's, it's like i said it's just an annoyance that happens sometimes number four is the skip button that should be somewhere on the steering wheel without going to the specific menu and then the last thing that does annoy me a bit about the car is the ride quality and the road noise. This is a Mercedes. It's supposed to be like an upper notch car. And when I'm driving and you hear the road noise and everything, yes, it's not the worst road noise you will hear. But if I get out of this car and I get into my BMW, um, the BMW is just on another level. I don't even know about the road. You don't feel the bumps. And I've got a Sporty. I've got a 335i. And it rides softer than this car. It's got less road noise. And it's more sporty, faster car. So why is this sport tour which is like a family car why is the ride harder and why do you hear more road noise in a car that's supposed to be more comfortable now onto things that i do like you know the road tree knob that i just complained about when you don't like accidentally touch it it's really good i love this for working in the system because then you don't have fingerprints and stuff on your screen you can work through all the menus and everything without ever having to touch your screen i like that and it's not difficult to use it's not like super complicated you can figure out the system without being like a brain surgeon so going through the menus is really easy i did watch a video on a, a, a serial killer so i'm not crazy it's, it's just a video i watched okay that's why it's showing it there um but yeah so going through the menus is really easy choosing your menu like let's go to radio i'd rather listen to radio at this moment i don't want to listen to some serial killer show thing and then you can just go through the stuff it's really easy to use like i said the Let's just Lanza change this back. Yeah. And when you want to phone somebody, you just go to your telephone function there at the top. Boom. And you can either choose there or you can see your call lists. And look, and you can literally just dial a number you already dialed. So this menu system is really good. I like the rotary knob for that. You don't have to ever dirty your screen. 10 out of 10. On to a really cool feature that none of the other automatic cars I've driven before has, okay? So, let's say you're standing at a robot. Now, on most automatic cars, you have to keep your foot on the brake at the bottom. But with this car, you can just press the brake really hard and it will keep it at the standstill. And then when you want to accelerate, you just touch the throttle and it will release. So, let's say I put it into drive now. I'll, I'll show you properly. So, now we're in first gear drive. So, like with most automatics, if I leave the brake pedal, the car will move forward. So we are slowly accelerating. But with this car, if I press down hard on the brake, you see it will have a hold function there. And now we can stand still at the robot. Then when we want to accelerate, we just touch the fuel and it will go. This is a really small thing, but it just makes it so much nicer to drive the car on a day-to-day -day basis. So the next one is really cool if you're a very lonely person. So the car literally hugs you. If you, tight, if you put your safety belt on, you'll see it's going to tighten. Watch. Did you see that? So it's giving me like a little hug before we go. I think that's very cool. It's probably just so it makes sure the safety belt's properly on. But I just like it. It feels like the car likes me a lot. And then the fourth thing I really like about this car is the cruise control system. It's got like a little control sticky at the bottom that you set your cruise control with. So you can resume everything here just from here. And it's really easy to use. And you can like learn it without going through the menu and having to read the entire book. You can just like be driving like poop and then ah that's how it works and i like things that are like that if a car is like this whole thing we have to read 20 pages just to figure something out i think it's crap it shouldn't be that difficult i want to be able to figure it out as i'm going and then the last thing that i really like about this car is the headlights it's got like super smart headlights that will turn with the corner it will automatically put your brights on and dim it if there's cars coming in front it's like completely autonomous headlights it's awesome i'll show a clip while i'm speaking of how mercedes explained this technology because i'm not going to do it justice but it's the coolest headlights i've ever seen on any car it's just 
damn awesome. Okay, so if you guys enjoyed this video and found it informative, leave a like and subscribe. I've got many more car reviews coming to the channel and then I've got videos on new cars, new technologies and just like new stuff. So if you like this video, leave a like, subscribe and then I'll check you guys in the next one. Jeez, that car was close to my side. Cheers, eh?